Yo, welcome back. This is Stu42 with another Minecraft video. Continuing on our little mini, mini two or three episodes long <laughs> series of getting extra power for the base. So we've done the farms, we've done the fermenters and the uh, squeezers. Uh, next thing we need to do is get ourselves some uh, refineries. Now I've made enough bits here to make two of them. So they've actually changed the pattern since last time. So I don't know what, what happened. Um, this one looks yeah, quite a bit different with the, um, what are they called? The steel scaffolding blocks instead. Um, sorry, not steel scaffolding, the sheet metal blocks instead. Seems a bit more straightforward now. Uh, it's still going to be five blocks long, three blocks wide. So uh, what are we going to do? With the plus in the middle of the light engineering block. So I'm going to put two down on this level and I'll probably put two further up. We'll start down here. Uh, I just want to leave a bit of space just in case I need to make another four and another four of these. So one, two, three, and then a gap. And then probably here, probably here. So if we're going to go another one of those, pipe and then a couple of gaps and then this will be the middle yep cool so that's pretty good that's pretty good and we might go this way i really need to sort the lighting situation out okay so that's there got a heavy at each end heavy heavy Scaffolding, 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 scaffolding. Now, makes things quite a bit easier just doing this. And then I believe it's just, yep, a light and a heavy above. So I'm not sure which way around these goes. The heavy, let's try it this way. I might grab our hammer. Nope, this side. And is that the way we want? Yes, that is actually the way we want. Cool. So that's working on the um, theory that the light engineering blocks are usually the power inputs and outputs. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and now we want that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the input. How many more can I fit here? One, two, three, four, five. Then a gap, and then one, two, three, four, five. Whoo! Not really. Not really enough room unless I move this over by one. Do I want to do that? Do I want to do that? Hmm. So if we've got a gap, so I'm planning on reusing the pipe. So the one pipe can go into here and feed both. It doesn't matter which side each thing's on. So that means we could potentially stack three on the bottom and three on the top, which gives us six of these total, which is good. So there's a gap. One, two, three, four, five, and then a gap, and then one, two, three, four, five. Right, so we're going to go one over, and I will have to move, move these at some point. So there, I'll be able to put another one in the middle here once I move this, but I'll just, I'll do that off camera most likely. So this is the, so these are pretty easy to build now. Uh, the light ones for the power, heavy ones there. Oh, yeah, it's still got it wrong. This side, there we go. Cool. Uh, and this one we'll need to, we'll need to break. So the heavy bit goes in there now. Awesome. So that can go there. The light engineering, light engineering, extra scaffold. Scaffold, that needs to be a light one. That needs to be a scaffold. Where's the last heavy? Here we 
copy there. And we are heavy and light. No, around the side. Cool. So that means I can add another one. One, two, three, four, five. Like one, two, three, four, five. Yes, okay. So that's enough for that. Now we're going to also need our fluid ducts. Now this is where things get interesting. So what I'm going to have to do is offset everything. So what I might do is we'll run another light. <laughs> I'm going to probably have to come through here with the uh, with those other flush lights like I use in my nuclear room and we'll, uh, we'll set them up a bit better. There we go. Cool, so that's now got ethanol in. So if we're gonna have ethanol on that side and then we're gonna have plant oil here and then ethanol on this side as well. So let's just take that out. Cool, so that's the ethanol bits. And now for the other bits, we'll go to here. Now this is going to be, I'm going to need to do this. And make it come down and along like this. Probably going to be best. And I'm going to run out of Fluid ducts. Not that one, not that one. There we go. Cool. So that means we've got plant oil and ethanol there. And then that can also go up to the next floor above if we decide to make another three of these above. Uh, this side will have to be much the same, but I'm going to have to go away and make some more fluid ducts. The next thing we're going to need is a bunch of power. So I do have just our plain old energy conduit here which yeah I know I, I said this before but we could use the in the um the what is it the immersive engineering cables but I don't know I'm just I'm not really liking them all that much for stuff down here they seem to get a bit cluttery cool so there we go power and we have some biodiesel already. Awesome. So I'm going to have to run away off camera and make a bunch more of these pipes. I may get enough materials here for a third one of these just so that we can see how it's going to look. Um, but this should be a nice modular design and we can get these going. I'll also get the materials for the generators because we're going to have to stack the generators around this side of the room. Um, as we've said, we need to keep everything inside the bounds of these nine chunks. So there's that chunk, this chunk here, this chunk here and oh we've got a whole another chunk that that direction so that's cool I might clear some of this out as well then so we've got room for our generators and then it's just a matter of piping our power back up but I'm gonna need to make yeah, I'm gonna make it need to make a ton more uh, a ton more of these connections and um, pipes and things so I'll be back in just a minute with more materials and we'll see where we go from there see you in a bit already once again a bit more work uh, done behind the scenes I've made enough bits here 54 heavy engineering pretty brutal to make those uh, 18 radio blocks and 12 generator blocks this is enough to make two generators I've also managed to make two of the vibrant capacitor banks so I've put that here as a little buffer down here uh, which is you know 50 million RF should be quite a bit I've also plumbed this in this line goes all the way all the way up uh, I've actually had to run it uh, there we go, it goes up there. I've actually had to run it sort of up the back of this um, nuclear room. So it runs up here and up into the same input in the back of my main distribution, um, the main distribution capacitor that I have up there. I'll tidy this all up later. I'm actually contemplating making a second nuclear room off that side there, which means I'll still need to keep the stairs up there for a sort of access tunnel. Yeah, that could work later on though. Do that, do that another time. Uh, so yeah, it runs up into the back of this one here, which is a, which I've been using as my main um, capacitor bank. Everything sort of feeds off that one. So that's, 
the one I'm going to keep using. Uh, down here though, it's time to make some of these generators. Now, I haven't quite decided where I'm going to put these. I think I'm going to face the generator the other way. Maybe. Yeah, could be good. Could be good. All right, so let's give it a little bit of a gap here. Um, I'm going to leave... See, I wanted to have another three of those potentially above. Bit of a gap. One, two, three, four, five. Well, I've got plenty of space here. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we could go for... There, one, two, three, and the thing, and then a couple gap, and then... Yeah, there maybe. So then we can have one and another one over here. In the meantime, I'm actually going to make it once again with the tricky lights. Yeah, that could be good there. That that looks good. So let's put these radiator blocks. Now these ones are really easy to make in terms of uh, remembering the pattern for them. So it's just a big solid cube. Of three by three by three of the heavies and then Slightly shorter on the generator side. I believe it's there, yep, and there. Slightly weird to load then. Cool, so there we have two of these generators. Uh, we are getting close to the end of the ravine. I might have to tidy that up, bust out some of this here, but again, I'll do that off camera. Uh, we are gonna need the energy flux duct, so the power for these. going to go off like that. Now that's across there. Like that. Ah, not quite enough. Cool, so I should have Plenty of flux ducts. Cool, now that's plugged in. So we just want to, oops. Awesome, so that runs up to there now. And now we just need to hook up our, where are we? Fluid ducts, there we go. So we have some fluid ducts. Now I don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to run this. I might run this underneath actually. Oh, is it going to connect? Yes, it is, unfortunately. So where is that wrench of mine? Don't want it connecting there, don't want it connecting there, don't want it connecting there. We do want it connecting there, that's cool. Uh, for now, look, I'm just going to run this across to there, actually. I'm going to run this under here, just to make it a little bit more tidy. Now, these are going to start straight away. Woof. Cool. So, there we have some power trickling in here. We should have, yeah, 2048. That will actually be feeding up the top, first of all, and then feeding every downstream system that it can possibly get its hands on, uh, which eh, shouldn't be too much, actually. Should be. So, while that's running, we should see that. Yeah, there we go, plus 1,600, wow. So we are losing a bit of RF in the cable run. That's actually 400 RF per tick. We're losing in the cable run quite a bit. We might have to, I might build some dimensional transceivers actually to get around that, because that's that's quite a significant loss. 
uh, what do we need? We are going to need a bunch of now insulated redstone conduits. I'm going to have to make some more of those at some point. For now, though, we're going to just do I have any sticks? Uh, one. That's all right. We'll make some more. So there's some sticks. And this is now creeping up. Well, actually, no, that's 1,700 RF and then 1,600 up the top. So it might not be the cable run that's actually losing the power. It might be somewhere else. We might have to find a better sort of cable. I still think it's potentially the cable causing that issue. All right, but for now, we can throw that on there. Shut it down. Throw that on there. Shut it down if we need it shut down. Actually, what happens if we just leave one on? Nothing like a bit of testing. 700. You know what? It's probably because we're actually using power at the same time. There's always a little bit of power being used around the base. Um, sort of maybe 100 to 200. So that, yeah, maybe the cables are pretty good in that instance. Cool. So that's pretty much all we're going to need. We're going to prefer these to be down here now. And as you can see, that is starting to chew up some of the um, sugar. So what I might actually do is we'll run the same as we did last time. I'll put a, a, th a detector on here. We'll run a bit of a redstone wire down to both of these things here so that we can turn them off or turn them on rather when that reaches the right level. For now, actually, I'm going to do that and I'll come back and finish this episode just quickly once I've done that because it would be interesting for you guys to see just how much these things all work. I mean, I haven't. I haven't tested the numbers for this. I don't know how many generators I can run. I do want to build another, at least another two more generators. Uh, I'm unsure whether three refineries will cover that. I'm pretty sure the uh, uh, squeezers and fermenters there are going to more than um, cover the stuff at the moment. Uh, we may need some more at some point though, as well as replanting the rest of this. Anyway, I'm going to go and make this redstone stuff. I'll be back in just a minute once we've done a bit of testing and put the redstone in and I'll conclude the episode and let you know what the testing revealed. See you in a little bit. Okie dokie, once again we are back and everything is running. I've got the redstone conduit, uh, well I've got the just redstone conduit there and the insulated redstone conduit. You need the insulated one to do the connections, uh, which you of course then need to hit the side uh, with the wrench to get it to connect. So I've got just the one run controlling both of them at the moment. Uh, we have our Capacitor bank charging up plus 1800, that's not too bad. Uh, I found that this was draining at about a rate of like 100 to 150. Uh, so I am potentially still losing 100 RF per tick somewhere in the system. I'm not entirely sure where. It may just be down to the cables in various places uh, and other things like thermal centrifuges I've got running all the time. Uh, but that's pretty good, that's good enough for now anyway. This is set to 90%, so this is gonna keep running those generators until we hit that 90% level. Once we hit the 90% level, um, it'll cut those off and we'll be using stuff upstairs. As you can see, it's also not really using that much of the plants. I mean, it's, it's kind of making its way through it. It's not using a whole heck of a lot. It sort of gets banked up and then waits a while and then that mate does some more and then waits a while. One of the other things that I found is with these two uh, generators, this one here is pretty much doing nothing. So is that one, so is that one. The one on the very end, however, it's hovering around 48, 56 melon seeds. It, so it seems to be keeping up just fine with only one of these uh, industrial squeezers. So the other three aren't even being used yet. So potentially a bit of overkill there. Uh, likewise down here, we've got this thing hovering around that 48, yeah, 48, 56. It kind of hovers around that 50 mark. I think that's just because the harvester waits until there's you know enough room to send stuff through uh, and this one's just sitting on 64 64 so the same with those other two uh, the same sort of deal here with the refineries you know we've got this refiner in the end nothing 12,000 12,000 12,000 same with this one and then the one on the end here this is where we start seeing it doing something so 11 9 7 6 so that means it's actually pulling the biodiesel out of this one uh, but again seems to be keeping up 
more than ha happily with uh, two generators. So again, potentially overkill on those three refineries. As I get more iron and steel, I am gonna start stacking more and more of these generators here. I am gonna put at least another two here and probably another one, two, yeah, who knows? I mean, if I could get up to, you know, five or 6,000 RF per tick with another few generators, that'd be pretty much ideal. Um, and then we can run, you know, run our excavator full time and get our processing running better, all sorts of cool stuff. We're probably gonna need this when we get to apply to logistics as well. So that looks pretty, pretty decent. Uh, again, the keen-eyed amongst you will, uh, will have seen the slight flaw in the plan, which is, the two RF monitors upstairs that are running just fine. Uh, however, the nuclear is not gonna be running at all. So the nuclear is only gonna run now once this one is completely empty. And this is such a massive capacitor bank. So what I think I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna rip out these two uh, capacitors here. And then I'm going to, actually let's just add a cutoff switch. Can I add it here? Excellent, cool. So I'm just gonna um, turn them manual off, so it's a manual cutoff. So what I'm gonna do is I'll wait for this to, yeah, there we go, it's using about 120 normally. So I'll wait for this to d drain out. Uh, I'll swap the big capacitors up for my main bank. And then what I'll do is I'll change this out for just one tiny, tiny capacitor bank, uh, just as a collection point. So what we can do with the capacitor banks is, uh, the five, five million one, ooh, although we might need two of them just because, as you can see, the maximum input and output is directly relational to how much is stored in there. So this holds 50 million, means the maximum is 50,000 in and out, which means we're probably gonna want to have two of the five million ones here uh, to give it a 10 million storage, which means we're gonna have 10,000 in and out, which will support up to, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, up to 10 of these generators. Uh, maximum so I'll do that it means our main, it means our main switchboard is going to be the the biggest power store which is kind of what we want because it means that this one runs dry faster which means we hit our nuclear faster uh, and I still really want to use that nuclear fuel up just so that we can make lots of plutonium for bits and pieces down the track but for now, as always, this is a good place to stop this episode. We have managed to prove the point with these, gone overkill completely on this side, but that leaves us in good stead for putting more of these generators in. So uh, that's it for this episode. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.